What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Tokenizer, and I'm here to bring you guys in-depth analysis and insights from the digital asset space, along with covering the progressive tokenization of the world. So in today's video, I'm gonna be breaking down a crypto project for you guys that's working to connect every blockchain and legacy system into one universally interoperable operating system to allow for our pre-existing systems data and networks to seamlessly flow into this new innovation of blockchain and distributed ledger technology. But before we start all that, I'm just going to clear some things up real quick and say that I'm not a financial advisor and therefore you should not be taking anything I say as financial or investment advice. The FA I give out stands for fundamental analysis, not financial advice. But now that we got that out of the way, let's get right to it. So the project we're going to be breaking down today is Quant Network. And Quant is what I'd like to consider like an alien in the world of crypto. They're not on a blockchain or a DAG. Instead, they're a patented universally interoperable operating system. An operating system that can connect all our world's current systems to this new blockchain and DLT. Because as innovative as the tech is, we're not just going to throw away the decades of capital and labor we spent building out these legacy systems, right? So this operating system is called Overledger. And as you could probably imagine, this is a solution which would cater to a bunch of enterprises which is exactly the market audience the team at Quant is after. But on the blockchain side of things, this opens up new possibilities. So pretty much all these other blockchain interoperability solutions at the moment are doing so by building out another chain to other existing blockchains out there. So this would mean that everyone would have to use one interoperability solution, whether it be Atom or Polkadot. So ironically, they're actually going to be creating another interoperability problem by being a subpar interoperability solution. So instead, what Quant has done is built their operating system on top of these blockchains, and it allows for any network in its ecosystem to communicate and cooperate with each other and build out applications that can be accessed through multiple blockchains so that any other network can simply join in through a gateway. Now, here's the part where Quant really is one of a Time. So what consists of a layer one's ecosystem? DApps, right? Decentralized applications. Now with Overledger's interoperability, Quant has taken this to a whole new level. They've made MDApps, multi-chain decentralized applications. So this takes what we already know as interoperability to new heights, since now we can make any application interoperable through any other network. So in theory, this could potentially mean, let's say a developer wants to program a DApp on Ethereum but they want this application to be affordable. So it has the scalability of Algorand, but maybe with the security of Bitcoin. Well, that's all possible since Overledger allows all these networks to communicate with each other under them. And so maybe let's say HSBC who uses R3 Corda wants to access this application. Well, they're gonna need something to bridge Corda to Ethereum, right? And I'm not quite sure it'd be something like Polkadot or Cosmos as they'd want something more enterprise grade and secure. But let's move on and take a quick look at the team at Quant. First off, we've got the CEO and founder of Quant, Gilbert Verdian. And honestly, this guy has one of the best resumes I've ever seen, not just in crypto. He served as Chief Strategic Officer and Deputy Chief Technology Officer at Her Majesty's Treasury. And this is the department of the UK government we're talking about. They're responsible for carrying out all the financial and economical policies. And I just want to point out one important thing real quick. So when you're doing your research on these projects, beyond looking at where the founders of these guys used to work at, you also got to look at what positions they were holding. There is a big difference between being a retail clerk at McDonald's and being in a C-level position at McDonald's. So as we see, Gilbert has held two C-level positions at possibly one of the highest grade government departments in the UK. And he also spent about seven months working at HSBC within their securities program. And then another year and a half as a security lead at the Ministry of Justice UK, another absolutely major government department there. Then he went down to New Southern Wales down in Australia for two years, where he worked in their government health, finance, services and innovation departments as the chief information securities officer. And this was around the same time Gilbert had decided to build out the idea of Quant back in 2015, as he was getting frustrated at not having an interoperable system to organize all patient data. 
He then left Australia after to work for Vocalink, which is a MasterCard payments company. And there he again served as Chief Information Securities Officer for two years. Then he went to work at the Bank of England for another two years, this time in their Cross Markets Operating Resilience Group. And this group is pretty much responsible to work to enhance cyber and financial security from attacks. Then for two years, he took his talents to North America, where he worked at the U.S. Federal Reserve for two years, where he was in the Secure Payments Task Force, along with the Fed Payments Improvement Committee. And now those were just some of Gilbert's previous job positions. We haven't gone into his accolades yet. So he served as chair of DLT at the British Standard Institute. And this organization pretty much works together to make standards across industries all around the world. And along with that, he was the founder of the ISO standard TC307. This is the global standard for blockchain and distributed ledgers for data interchange and interoperability between all these applications. And this standard's already seeing adoption from over 50 countries. So now the picture is starting to get kind of more clear about how quants made over ledger capable of all this. And of course, just what Gilbert Verdian is able to accomplish. But enough about Gilbert, let's move on to some of Quant's other members. We've got Quant's Chief Product Officer, Martin Hargreaves. And Gilbert first connected with Martin during their time at Vocalink, where Martin was there for a good 13 years climbing the ladders, from Head of Technical Architecture all the way up to Vice President during his time. Now that's some dedication. Then there's two board directors on Quant's team that really stand out. So first up, we got Neil Smith, who served as the former CEO and vice chairman for Comcast and helped grow it out to one of the largest telecommunication networks in the nation. And then we've also got Guy Dietrich, and Guy's got about three years of experience working at Rockefeller Capital as the managing director. And if that name sounds familiar, well, this is the same Rockefeller as the John D. Rockefeller back in the 1800s. The same guy who was estimated to have a total net worth of 418 billion at one point, making him the richest person of all time. And on top of that, Guy also runs his own private investment fund since 2012, Dietrich Capital Partners. But before all this, he had spent a whole 26 years at one of the biggest investment banks as their managing director, Morgan Stanley. So yeah, Quant probably has one of the most professional and enterprise-ready teams in crypto out there. And for what they're doing, they're going to need just that. But let's dive into some of Quant's partners real quick. So Gilbert stated multiple times that they've got a lot of NDA partnerships, which stand for non-disclosure agreement. But if you're working with partners that need that form of privacy, I feel like it's something big, like at the federal level big. But we'll have to find out eventually. So first, let's just cover some of Quant's partners within the crypto ecosystem. We've first up got LCX, which is the most regulated and institutional grade crypto exchange out there, eight licenses and counting. And Quant's chosen LCX as a partner to collaborate with both these strong teams of personnel to develop and further advance interoperable CBDCs, along with interoperating systems within the LCX ecosystem, potentially like payment railways. So while this partnership might not have the coolest headline or much for network participants to be looking forward to, you got to really look at the macro picture for this. LCX and Quant are both fully compliant and both the CEOs are part of some high level organizations. So it's likely that these two have been chosen by those high level organizations to build out the interoperable CBDC. And CBDCs are going to be inevitable, whether we like it or not. Most payment forms have already gone digital anyways. Blockchain and distributed ledger technology are just the next step. So Quant's also partnered with Constellation, which I'll leave a link up here for you guys if you want to check out more about Constellation. But this partnership between the two is formed with the vision of building out interconnected cities and connecting our borderless world that much closer through an interoperable internet for big data, IoT, and edge devices. My next video is actually going to be just dedicated to the collab between these two. So if you're excited for that, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn that ringer on so you don't miss it. But just a quick summary of what this will do. So the scope of this partnership can range from things like connecting all the blockchains and metropolitan areas in a city to track and best utilize the energy distribution 
along with tracking news and events in real time like car crashes, busy shopping hours, or traffic jams. So this is going to be huge because this isn't like your usual crypto partnership where it's like, oh, well, with this partnership, we can now allow cross-chain liquidity or something. And nothing against those partnerships. They're definitely going to be needed for this market to continue maturing. But how many crypto partnerships out there are actually working with something like this with real world application? I mean, like you could argue what they're doing here sounds more like something a company in the Nasdaq 100 would be doing. And Quant's also got a partnership with Alliance Block, which I'll leave another link up here in case anyone's interested in learning more about Alliance Block. But to summarize, they're a blockchain agnostic layer two that's working to create a market where people can trade any financial asset, including some less liquid ones like real estate, art, and even data. And of course, their work can be fully compliant. And on top of all that, Alliance Block is also going to have SME developers on their platform where Overledger can easily be integrated into whatever they're building, along with Alliance Block leveraging Overledger to allow them to do cross multi chain swaps. But now let's move on to some of their legacy partners. So, first off, let's cover the partnership with SIA. For those of you who might not know what SIA is, they're Europe's largest payment service platform, but they also serve over 50 countries on top of that. And they've got 570 banks as their clients. And to just put to perspective how big they really are, as if that wasn't enough, in 2019, they processed over 16.1 billion transactions. No, not $16.1 billion worth of transactions, but 16.1 billion transactions. So what's such a big financial service company want from a crypto project? Well, we mentioned how they've got over 570 banks for their client base, right? Well, these banks need to transition from this new system of blockchain and DLT since their current systems can't keep up. But it's going to be pretty hard getting all these banks to all agree on using just one blockchain, maybe even impossible. So instead, why not let every bank choose or build out whatever blockchain they want and then let Overledger do the rest being the interoperability solution and letting them all work together in a single system. They've also partnered with Lackchain, which is a global alliance formed by the Inter-American Development Bank to help with blockchain and distributed ledger infrastructure to be integrated into the Latin American and Caribbean economies. So of course, Overledger is going to provide the interoperability solution for Lockchain, but the biggest part of this whole partnership is that Quant is working with them to build out the Latin American dollar. Now just take a moment to think about how big that really is. They're already working to build the digital pound with Ripple, Electronium, and Avalanche, but also the Latin American dollar? Do you know how much power, trust, and connections you need to build out a region's currency? A fucking lot, along with being compliant. Now multiply that by two. And I've saved perhaps the best for last, Oracle, which has also chosen to partner with Quant. So I'm sure most of you guys probably have heard of Oracle, right? They're the biggest cloud and software platform out there in the world at the moment. So what would Oracle want to do with Quant? Well, what first started off with Oracle adding Quant into their Oracle global startup ecosystem, where Quant would have access to Oracle's professional and enterprise grade experience and mentorship has recently advanced to Oracle actually announcing that Overledger will be the certified interoperability solution on their blockchain platform. And again, I'll give you all a moment to just take that in. This is a NASDAQ 100 company worth about $250 billion that's decided to partner with Quant for their interoperability solution. And this is going to give Overledger exposure as a solution to over 400,000 clients on Oracle. Oracle could have tried to build out a interoperability solution themselves, and I'm surprised if they hadn't tried. But look what's happening now. So yeah, those are Quant's primary partners. And just by looking at their SIA and Oracle partnership, that should let you know that there's real world businesses out there that have a massive client base and have demand for Quant and Overledger. But now let's dive a little into the general utility and tokenomics of the QNT token. So first I'll highlight the reason that I personally think the QNT token is much more likely to survive even if regulations kick in than a lot of these other tokens out there. So they've been regulated by FINMA as a utility token for digital services, and they're responsible for monitoring and supervising 
all the banks, insurance companies, and securities exchanges out there. So yeah, I feel pretty safe holding my quant for the next few years, even with regulation talks. Again, not financial advice, just my personal outlook. And so there's a circulating supply of 12.7 million quant at the moment and a total supply of 14.6 million. So about 87% of the tokens are already in circulation. And Quant's 14.6 million is about 33% more scarce than Bitcoin's 21 million. But hold on, it gets better. Let's dive into the utility aspects of QMT now. So the QMT token will be required for just about anything on Overledger. To access Overledger, whether you want to just use some of the multi-chain applications or build out something on Overledger, you're going to have to pay a license that's either payable in QMT or fiat but it'll be a fixed fiat amount of $99. Or if you're a developer, you get to pay double that. And if you're an enterprise, well, you get to pay 10x that at $1,000. So either if you pay in QNT or fiat, the QNT treasury is gonna convert any license payment to the QNT equivalent and lock it away in the treasury for a year. So if you thought 14 million was scarce, just wait until their mainnet launches and retail clients along with their institutional partners begin having to go through the same process. But of course, there's a bunch of other features on Overledger that are gonna require QNT too. For example, each wallet that accesses Overledger will have a digital identity attached to them, and every transaction that takes place on the platform is going to be secured and validated by the QNT token through cryptography. And as if Quant itself wasn't unique enough, their staking mechanism is pretty unheard of. So rather than staking pools or validator nodes, Quant's staking and validating mechanism is through gateways, where anyone can set up a gateway through getting a license, along with having the hardware device for it. And once their gateway is set up, they can then stake their QNT tokens on top of their gateway for more throughput at validating transactions. And though these gateways won't yield you a consistent rate like how ETH 2.0 staking averages to about 6%, instead it'll be dependent on the network activity on Overledger. And something tells me Overledger is going to be used daily by developers and businesses around the world in the coming years as the network effect of connecting every network begins to snowball. The potential I personally see in Quant is very high. They've not only got the first mover advantage to a blockchain OS, but one that's universally interoperable with not just blockchains, but our legacy systems too. And remember, their interoperability solution isn't by building out bridges or parachains like Polkadot or Atom. Instead, they've built Overledger on top of these networks so they can all work within a system. So if we take the theory of Metcalf's law here, where the value of a network is proportional to the square number of its users and connections, well, then we also got to account for the fact Quant is quite literally connecting all the networks together under Overledger then the network value of Overledger and thus the QNT token should be ever growing since there's always going to be new networks that are being built and need to be connected with other systems to work properly. So to wrap it up real quick, Quant has built the first blockchain OS that will allow us to bridge our world's legacy systems and networks into this new blockchain technology. I really think this is what's going to start the true adoption of blockchain and distributed ledgers because again, we're not just going to throw out our decades, we're not just going to throw out the decades we've spent building out our legacy systems. Do they kind of suck? Absolutely. Why the fuck do we need to wait five days to send money aboard? But that doesn't mean we can just say, all right, fuck it, new system, new start. And they obviously realize that even once mass adoption hits, there's not going to just be one blockchain to rule them all. There's always going to be different preferences, just like how some people might like to use an Android and some people like an iPhone. Or maybe some people like using Verizon and some like AT&T. Interoperability is what solves everyone's difference in tastes. And we highlighted who they're working with already and what they're doing. SIA, Oracle, Latin American Dollar, Digital Pound, Autonomous Cities. This is far from your usual crypto project. They're literally changing the way we can use our technology. All right, so that was our little breakdown and introduction in the quant network. Let me know what you guys think or want to see next. And if you guys liked what you saw, remember to show some love by hitting that like and subscribe and turning that ringer on so you don't miss a thing. 
And don't forget to check out some of my other fundamental analysis articles on Medium. Or if you guys just want to keep up to date and connect with me, hit me up on Twitter, Telegram, or Instagram, all at Tokenizer. And for those of y'all who don't feel like reading, I got you with the Spotify podcast here at Tokenize TV. And I'll be working to get all that up on Apple Podcasts sometime soon. But anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today. Hope everyone got a little something good out of it, whatever it may be. But anyways, stay safe out there. Keep on grinding. Until next time, peace.